Hi folks, yesterday Paul asked Chat GPT to write a program to operate a servo using the Orion microcontroller board. So it did that and it also gave me a set of instructions to do it. So I'm going to try and do that now. So first it says to operate a servo using the Orion microcontroller and the make block programming language, follow these steps. Open the make block software and create a new project. File new, right. So it's file new, yeah. So it's created a new file called Untitled, yeah. Yeah. So what do you want to call it? Chat G P T Servo. Hit return. That's what it's called, yeah. So we've opened the Make Block software and we've created a new project. And the next step is to add the Orion device to the project. So click on Add. Find the Orion device. Is that one? Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's been added to the project. The next step is drag and drop the servo block from the Orion category into the workspace. Right, so under the subheading he at the side, we want action which is in blue, and all the individual actions are in blue. And so colour coded. And we drag that servo block out here. Right. So this this say servo port three slot one, but you just set all those in angle. Yeah. Connect the servo to port one on the Orion board. Now one and two on the Orion are for controlling. Is it DC motors, Paul? I'm not sure. I'm just. Uh, I'm pretty sure. That's why they're in a completely different colour in this red colour. So ports one and two are six to twelve volt driver modules, and the modules using this port are the dual motor driver, the stepper motor driver, or the encoder motor driver. Because a servo motor, mm -hmm. this is a servo motor, first has to be connected to one of these boards. Yeah. Th this colour code on here means mm -hmm. that you've got to connect. Match it up with the colour code. Blue, yellow, black. So yeah. we, we can connect it into, I would say... Eight, um, seven, six, five, four, three. Yeah. So basically any other than one and two. <laughs> so it seems, yeah. So we're going to choose port... Four. Port four, so in the software. So we can have port three, four, six, seven, and eight. Three, four. Well, that's interesting six, seven, and eight. because it asked you to choose port one and it's not even in the drop down menu. Yeah, so it's made a mistake there, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. So we're choosing port four. Four. And slot one. Because we've got a choice of two slots. So once this adapter board has been plugged into port four, we then get two slots, slot one and two. You can see it actually yeah, marked up. One. So we're in, we'll leave it in slot one. Okay. Set the angle of the servo using the set angle block. You can set the angle to a specific value or use a variable to dynamically control the angle. So we're just going to leave it set at the default 90. Okay. Finally, add a delay block to give the servo time to move to the desired angle. And then it says, here is an example program that sets a servo angle to 90 degrees and then waits for two seconds before setting the angle to 180 degrees. Okay. So it just says, set servo one angle to 90. So we've got set servo four angle to 90. Wait two seconds, then set servo angle to 180. I, I notice it's got when flag clicked as the, as the first line. When flag clicked. And then we want uh, a control. Oh, wait. Wait, yeah. How many seconds? So it's under control. And it's two seconds. Okay, then, then what's next? Then set servo angle to 180. Right, so we can duplicate so, this yeah, line. Duplicate can't that. So it's still servo port four, slot one, but this time the angle is 180. 180. 
and uh, this would just execute once yes when clicked and then the program would be over right but normally you do put it in a loop yes so i'll plug the orion module in to the power and turn it on let's plug the servo into port four so yeah usb connect it in To the Orion. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we can connect. And it's connected. I collect to live rather than upload because uh -huh. what we're doing is uh, using when clicked as an input. Right. So, so it's got to be live. It, I think it's got to be live, yeah. Yeah. Click. Yeah, that's it. So we're live, mm -hmm. the connection is live rather than upload, and we're going to click on the flag. So it's moved it to 90, waited two seconds, then moved it to 180, and then terminated. Mm -hmm. But normally the program would be in a loop. Yeah. So try it once more when clicked, goes to 90, two second wait, then goes to 180. Success. So, Chat GPT did successfully give us a program that that worked but yes, yes but it made an error yes with the port and also you couldn't just use use those instructions as a, like a complete novice to go and do it you need to have some familiarity familiarity with the, um, programming environment but we didn't say when we asked the question to chat GPT, we didn't say as a complete novice or uh, yeah, yeah mm. with no prior knowledge, mm -hmm. how would I do this? And it may well have given a different answer, more complete and more detailed. Yeah, and so we're going to try that out as well and see if if asking it mm. in a different way, giving it more information. Yeah, but if if we get a different sort of response. But really, it's uh, it's well done, chat gpt and uh, oh yeah that ai is remarkable uh-huh and it would be interesting to write it to see it write a more sophisticated and a longer program yeah yeah so we'll certainly be using it again i think so so folks that about wraps it up for this video and we will do a follow-up and let you know if phrasing the question to chat gpt gives us a different results yeah but that's it for this video folks thanks for watching as always and see you next time